Similar concept, but different circumstances in Green Bay, where Aaron Rodgers will likely meet with the media at some point this week as the Packers launch their offseason program under first-year head coach Matt LaFleur. And the Packers media sessions this week have necessarily become more intriguing because of last week's story from Tyler Dunn of Bleacher Report, an exhausting uh, exhaustive and exhausting look at uh, at what was going on in Green Bay over the past several years with Mike McCarthy there as the head coach. And Chris, so many rabbit holes and so many issues and so many things to dispute and rebut. And, you know, my understanding is the Packers privately dispute the idea that CEO Mark Murphy said to Aaron Rodgers, don't be the problem. I expect that Rodgers will take that head on and say that never happened. But this is going to be a, a, a difficult one for Rodgers as well because – He's got that reputation for being passive aggressive. Everyone will be interpreting or at least trying to interpret everything he says. He he needs to play this straight and he needs to come out and, 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 you know, try to put 2018 behind him and focus on the future and doing everything that needs to be done to help his current team, to help his new coach. And uh, I think the more he says, the more that we will have as media members to parse through his words and try to find hidden meanings, I think it would be hoove him to say as little as possible. Yeah, no, I think he's got to, uh, again, you're right. Hey, the, the the things that are out there about him, sensitive, you know, uh, passive aggressive. Listen, you know, I love Aaron Rodgers. I don't know him. Uh, I've met him for 30 seconds in my life. So I have no like personal vested interest here other than I love the guy and the way he plays football on the field. But I hear all these things throughout the NFL. So some of it must be true. Yes, I get it. Now, listen, uh, I think it's overblown we're talking about Greg Jennings who basically exposed to us that it was personal and uh, there was issues there between him and Jermichael Finley they didn't like Aaron Rodgers you have a hard time finding other players down the line though that don't I mean a lot of the players that have been there for a long time have loved Aaron Rodgers and I understand he's not perfect but I think he needs to show respect to Mike McCarthy uh, within this process yes kind of end the rumor of the fact that oh yeah Mark Murphy had to call me and tell me don't be the problem he'll he'll handle that head on and and uh, debunk that whole thing but I guess where I get a little frustrated again too is you know people going with oh with Aaron Rodgers changing the plays and doing things like that and not taking orders well there's just more to the story that we found out too you know again you know changes plays yeah okay the coach wasn't there in meetings at times I think he has an issue with that you know okay you've allowed the player to change the plays when he does it then you can't be mad at him because you don't seem to be mad at him when he tells or changes the play in the huddle and the NFC championship or NFC divisional game a few years ago it's against the Cowboys where he draws up a play in the sand and throws a 40-yard laser to save the game to Jared Cook who's falling out of bounds to then go ahead and win the football game so you got to take the good with the bad again it was the the culture in Green Bay that has led to this. They went from a Brett Favre, gunslinger, carry us Brett Favre type of team, and they transitioned right into that to Bre- to Aaron Rodgers, to where it was, oh, Aaron, carry us, save us, do magical things, and therefore we've created this guy who seems like he's almost bigger than the franchise, and we want to blame Aaron Rodgers a little bit, and I understand some blame deserves to go there, But I also want to say part of the culture was to make him into this, and he had no other choice but to be this guy that could carry the team as well. So that's where I fight back, I guess, a little. Do you ultimately believe what Tyler Dunn reported last week? I know there's a lot there, and and it's, 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 it's one of these things where there's so much in there. Yeah. It's hard to pick and choose and say, I believe some of it, but not others. There there used to be a story that I would tell uh, when you're trying to convince a jury that your case is the right side and you should vote in their favor. If there's some glaring flaw in the other side's case, it's like a chunk of rancid meat in a bowl of beef stew. You don't just take out the rancid meat. You dump out all the stew. I mean, from your perspective, did you think overall that, that Tyler Dunn's report about the Packers was persuasive. Uh, yeah, broadly, I thought that it was pretty, yeah, pretty spot on. Spot on to the things I've heard over the years in a lot of ways. You know, I'm not going to say I agreed with every specific thing that I heard in the story and all of that, but yeah, I think broadly, I mean, when we just talk about there was a disconnect between Rod, you know, Rodgers and McCarthy, I certainly do agree with that. Some of the issues we've talked about leading up to prior to this article being re- released about McCarthy not being a part of some of the game 
game planning and then calling plays. We had always heard those type of things. You know, Rodgers having a chip on his shoulder about McCarthy not drafting him uh, in the 2000, what was that, five draft, six draft, uh, all that being personal. Yeah, I, I believe all of that. I've always kind of heard those things, and I think Tyler Dunn just laid them out perfectly for all of us to see. And there's another one, Mike. I mean, people are mad for Aaron Rodgers having a chip on his shoulder. See, this is where I don't get. It's okay for some people to have a chip on their shoulder and then others not. And that's where I get crazed by the media sometimes and the, you know, hypocrisy of it. We're going to celebrate one guy for having a chip. Uh, but the other guy, man, that chip's too big. Slow down. You're going too far here. And I, I don't always like that aspect of it either. Well, but it's one thing to have a chip on your shoulder that's directed externally. It's another thing to hold a grudge internally that applies to your head coach and that undermines the way that you regard your coach. Sure. And maybe you're more likely to view your coach as an idiot, like Rodgers reportedly did, a low football IQ, that kind of stuff. You you never get to the point where you bond the way you should if that that disrespect that predated the coach's arrival. And maybe the message in hindsight is they never should have hired Mike McCarthy in the first place. I mean, they'd had Aaron Rodgers around for a year. They presumably had an idea of how he ticks. Maybe they should have realized that this wasn't the best combination. Maybe they should have hired Sean Payton instead of Mike McCarthy to be the head coach. He was the other finalist. But I... I I think that it's more problematic if that chip on the shoulder is directed to somebody that you're supposed to be working with Agreed. and coming together and trying to win football games with. Yeah, no, I, I won't I won't dispute what you said there. You're exactly right. If it's becoming personal to a guy that's the head coach in charge and you're butting heads with them because you're letting a personal chip that happened years and years before that uh, kind of get in the way of you know a, a fruitful business career going forward as far as success on the field between between two guys. I'm with you there, Mike. I won't dispute that. You mentioned a, a few minutes ago that you only met Aaron Rodgers once for 30 seconds. Yeah. Did you shake his hand when you met him? I did, of course, yes. If if you were not a spleenless germaphobe, would you have ever washed that hand again? Yes, I'm not that obsessive that I feel like that I have to do that. <laughs> but you know what? Like I am like you know how like John Dorsey or Andy Reid shook my hand at the combine or at the NFL owners meeting and they like they mentioned how big my hands were, right? Uh, I did the same thing with Aaron Rodgers because I, you know, again, I'm a I'm a football aficionado. I love to sit there, I watch how guys grip the football and do those things. Aaron Rodgers has gigantic hands, so when I did shake his hand, I was very aware, going, "Oh man, those are some long fingers." Okay, now I know why he can throw that ball the way he can. That was the thing I took away from shaking his hand. You know, the bigger the hand, the more surface area for germs, too. Oh, that's right. You, you know, be what, careful. Yep. You know what they say about big hands. Big gloves. We really are going to go Big there. Gloves. Hey, what was your what was your what Big was your gloves, impression, you pervert. impression when We're you just... shook? Well, I didn't say anything. What was your impression when you shook my tiny little uh, little boy hand? You don't have tiny little boy hands. You got a pretty good sized hand for a guy. That's what. What are you five eleven? I'll take five eleven. Okay, maybe five ten and a half. But you have some. No, I'll take five eleven. Uh, we'll go with five ten and a half. Now that you said you take it, I'll take it. six foot. Oh no, we're not going to give you that. You got square <laughs> shoulders and some long arms, so you have some attributes of like a six one, six two uh, guy. So there, there's something. I'll to take that six too. one. Yeah, I'll take six one. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.